Greetings, everybody. So it's time for another top 10 best fruit in the world episode. Now, for those that don't know, I have spent the past seven years traveling around the world reviewing fruit. I have been to 25 countries as I film this, and I just finished my 400th episode reviewing fruit. It's a lot, and uh, I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time. In order to keep things a little bit more fresh, I'm only going to be counting things in this top 10 video that I have done since the last top 10 video that I did. So watch that top 10 video for everything up to episode 200. And this top 10 video is for everything between 200 to 400. And then uh, next time it'll be four to six hundred if I'm still doing this, which I probably will be. When you think about fruit, bran muffin is not usually a flavor profile that you would expect, but that's what you get with the Lala Palm. Not only do these things taste almost exactly like a sweet bran muffin, they also kind of look like them too. These oddly shaped fruits grow in Madagascar, and they're so hard and so fibrous that it's actually kind of hard to eat them. But there is something very satisfying about gnawing on these things. It's got a little bit of a dry raisin taste, a little bit of like a bran flake taste. Raisin bran. It tastes like a bran muffin. And the winner for a fruit that really should be in supermarkets but isn't is this one right here. The Chilean guava would fit in perfectly in the berry section of a supermarket right next to blueberries and strawberries and all of that. And it kind of tastes like if you were to take all of the berries in the berry section and mix them together. They are in the same family as the guava, and they were supposedly Queen Victoria's favorite fruit. I think she was onto something because these things are amazing. So we're gonna break this down into like understandable flavors. We've got blueberries, we've got, we've got strawberries, we've got orange peel, we've got maybe like a little bit of black pepper, maybe a little bit of uh, oregano, so this could totally be like something that could be cultivated and sold at a supermarket, but it's not. White sapote is a native to Mexico and Central America, and sometimes they can be found at supermarkets in California. Unfortunately, the majority of the world besides that is out of luck. These fruits have a creamy consistency, kind of like pudding, and this incredible, complex, yet mild flavor. Imagine like banana pudding with a little bit of coconut, a little bit of pineapple, uh, a little bit of vanilla. Yeah, that's, that's actually incredibly good. The one and only fruit on this list that is native to my country is also one you will sadly never see at stores. Thimbleberries are super concentrated with flavor and have a nice tartness to them. And they can fit on your finger like a thimble. They taste a little bit like if you were to cross raspberries and strawberries together. They're pretty good in a jam, and that's usually how they are used, but they're even better fresh. But unfortunately, they are so fragile and so perishable that if you want to eat them fresh, you got to pick them yourself. It reminds me of like the flavor you get from a like a strawberry or raspberry like sorbet, where it's almost like a little bit more concentrated. Syzygiums are a genus of fruit that have over a thousand different species in it. You can find these in tropical areas all around the world, and the fruits are generally pretty tasty, but most of them are very mild. Several of these species have the common name rose apple and are said to have a floral taste. 
But honestly, the majority of them do not really live up to that name, except for one. This particular rose apple with the scientific name Syzygium jambos is very small, but has a very strong rose flavor. And it would be incredibly useful in making a floral tasting jam, or be used to cook with, make an ice cream out of it. There's so many possibilities for this little fruit. It does actually taste like you're eating rose petals. The flavor of the baobab fruit isn't really top 10 material, but then why can't I stop eating it? Objectively, this really shouldn't be on this list, but when I think about any particular fruit that I've eaten over the years, if I can just transport one into my hand at any point in time, most of the time it would probably be a baobab. There's something so satisfying about eating this powdery fruit. If the fruit itself doesn't win you over, then the almond-like seeds on the inside will. Just don't eat them together, because for some reason they taste really good separate, but when you eat the seeds and the fruit together, it just doesn't work. Not everybody likes this fruit, but I actually like it a lot. It tastes like yogurt and a little bit sour, like lemons. So it reminds me a lot of having like a lemon yogurt. This gets number four on my list, even though the one that I had had a worm in it. And that is saying something. Mame apple may look kind of like the mame sapote, but they are not related and they taste completely different. Mame apple has a very strong fruit flavor that is reminiscent of mango and apricot, but also with a very floral taste to it. Worm or not, this is definitely one of the best fruits that I've ever eaten. I'm reluctant to say, just given the fact that, that these bugs have gotten to it, is that I actually really like this. We're... Yeah, that's good stuff. I have reviewed so many mangoes over the years that I have lost count. And every time I review any mango, I always will consistently get comments from people living in different countries telling me that I know absolutely nothing about what I am talking about because I haven't had mangoes from their country. And I'd say about half of those people are people who are living in India. Well, fine. So I went to India, I ate six different mangoes there, and you're right. Indian mangoes are incredibly good. There are flavors in these mangoes that I have not tasted in any other fruit. They are so unlike mangoes that I get at supermarkets where I live. Although I had a lot of really tasty ones when I was there, there was one that I thought really shined above all the others, and that was the Hamam mango. This one is creamy white on the inside, super sweet, and extremely musky. It's so different tasting that if somebody were to give me a piece of this and not tell me it was a mango, I don't think I would think it was a mango. After seven years of reviewing fruit, I thought that I knew everything there was to know about mangoes, but then I go to India and I try this mango and it changed everything. What is that? Um, this is, I, I feel weird even calling this a mango. Here's another weird one that I first found while I was in India. Bull's heart is a relative to some of my favorite fruits. The atomoya, the pawpaw, the rolinia, the cherimoya, the sugar apple. But this one separates itself from the other ones I've had because its texture and flavor are almost exactly like coconut yogurt. I'm not sure if this is my favorite of this type of fruit, 
but is certainly one that is way up there on my list for being so unique. So I've been uh, separating out these seeds, just kind of like digging them out of the, the fruit with this fork here. Just in that action of digging these out, I basically have liquefied this uh, pulp. This pulp doesn't have a whole lot of uh, integrity. So it became actually more yogurt-like now, not just flavor-wise, but the consistency after just a little bit of stirring with a fork turns into yogurt. If I had to choose one type of fruit that is my favorite, it would be Garcinias. The only one that seems to show up at markets in my country, the USA, is the purple mangosteen, which are good, but not anywhere as amazing as some of its relatives. The first time I did a top 10 video, a Garcinia, the Acha-Cha, made it to number one. The second time I made a top 10 video, that fruit was number two. Well, since I decided not to include old reviews in this list, I will not be including the Acha-Cha. However, I don't think I really need to. I have had Garcinias since then that are at least as good as the Acha-Cha, if not better. And one that especially stands out to me is this one. I'm not sure exactly what this one is, but I found it for sale at a market in the Bolivian Amazon, and I think it might be Garcinia Intermedia, but I'm not exactly sure. The flavor on this is similar to the Acha-Cha, only sweeter. So it's kind of like um, if we were to take purple mangosteen and like the acha churu and mix them together. Or if you haven't had either of those, it's like you took the purple mangosteen, that kind of like amazing, intense, like sort of like grape, but really much, much, much better than grape kind of flavor, and mixed it with like a little bit of like, I don't know, a little, little citrus taste, a little lemon juice or something, but better. Well, that's about it, guys. Uh, I guess I'll be making another one of these when I hit episode 600 which is just insane to think about, but I never thought I'd be getting to 400 either, and here we are. So it's been, a, it's been a wild ride. If you didn't see any of my past top 10 videos, go take a look at those, and uh, I will see you next time.